actually let your users write down their passwords. So in this case, you will have your users write down their passwords. But the problem is that, obviously, if uh, somebody uh, gets hold of this password, they can immediately uh, use it and, and authenticate themselves as, as, your, as you. So our approach is to complement complement this uh, piece of paper um, with sec secure password mnemonics. So rather than it being only something you know, uh, something you have, um, the adversary now has to have access to something you know, which is a mnemonic sentence. So when they steal the, uh, the, the piece of paper that has your password, they will not be able to authentic immediately authenticate themselves. So the name of the system that we propose is Empathy. Uh, it stands for uh, Reusable Mnemonics for Password Authentication. Um, as our pre just like our previous system, it uh, uses automatically generated mnemonics, so uh, the users don't have to uh, are not burdened with uh, generating their mnemonics. And uh, also, the, the mnemonics that uh, the, the scheme and the mnemonics that we provide uh, can support truly random passwords. And um, the most important benefit of empathy is that it can handle uh, multiple passwords with the same mnemonic. Remember, in the, uh, in the previous scheme, we were able to only remember one password per mnemonic. We were, go we were looking at either the first letter or the second letter, uh, and, and we, were, we were extracting one password per mnemonic. And the, uh, so, the most important advantage over the, the previous scheme of uh, empathy is that uh, if you uh, you can uh, if if somebody gets hold of one of your passwords as well as your uh, one of your passwords they, they cannot get any for any any information about your other passwords. If you think about the previous scheme, you could actually um, use the first letter for one password, second letter for another password, and the third letter for another for yet another password. But the problem is that. Um, because there are uh, regularities in the English language, let's say uh, if uh, you know the, the first letter of your word was Q, uh, the second letter of your uh, your word will definitely be a U. So uh, your, you, you, the, the security of your uh, of the second password was compromised in the previous scheme. So with empathy, we achieve uh, that we, we make sure that uh, such such uh, situations do not occur. And um, also, we let the user to write down a complete description of their password. Of course, uh, this is a complete description for the user uh, who has the information about the mnemonic. And uh, we also, we also uh, achieve uh, easy user reconstruction of the, of the passwords. And um, we, we can also, do, we, we, we also do this uh, without any requirement of an additional computational power. Um, this, we don't require the user to have a PDA or um, not even a, a, a calculator. And uh, a big advantage of our system is that we don't require a change to the existing infrastructure. So you could go ahead and use this um, on, on, your, uh, on your Yahoo account without Yahoo knowing that you're using this system. And also, you don't have to change your passwords to use this, this system. You can actually keep your passwords and continue using the system. And then when you have to change your passwords, you can, uh, you, can, you can do interesting things. I'm going to talk about that. Which is, uh, you can actually keep the mnemonic and change your password. Um, think about it. Uh, if, if, there's a, if there's a policy that forces you to change your password every day, uh, well, you cannot you cannot do it when you when you have uh, one mnemonic for password per password, uh, even if you use mnemonics. But with empathy, we, we we can achieve this. That is, like you can keep your mnemonic and keep changing your password. And let's see how we achieve this. Um, first, we select a mnemonic sentence, um, which is. Uh, so the system first generates a, a list of uh, pr uh, possible mnemonics for the user, and the user uh, chooses one of them to his or her liking. And then um, 
we choose a uh, we choose a set of strong passwords which are um, preferably generated by a random password generator, and then um, our system generates a helper card uh, that combines that combines both of uh, that by combining the two information, um, the the mnemonic sentence and the set of passwords, and the user then can authenticate uh, the users can authenticate themselves by using uh, their helper card. Let's run through a sample session of authentication. Assume that um, this is our this is our mnemonic sentence: the birth of ice cream, why and how we sneeze at midnight. Uh, we generated this uh, this password out of a, um, a a Slate article, I guess, and um, I don't remember the original sentence. Sorry. So here is our helper sheet. In the helper sheet, as you see, there there uh, there are several tables. And um, on the columns, the, the, the column headers, we have the letters of the alphabet. And, and we have, in this case, we have three tables. Assume that for our first, uh, first system, uh, the, the mnemonic word is birth. And we're going to use the first table in this, in this card to authenticate ourselves. If you look closer, on the left side of the first table, uh, you see that our, our user has chosen to write down the, the, the name of the system that uh, she is going to use to authenticate. And um, also, the first four letters of the password are written in clear over there. And the leftmost column of the table actually holds the indices of the letters that we're going to use out of this um, mnemonic word in the authentication process. The the, the letters of the word are indexed uh, with positive integers uh, uh, left to right and negative integers uh, right to left. So, in order to authenticate ourselves, we first uh, write the first uh, four symbols of the password and we just type them. It's T minus uh, question mark four. Um, to find out the first letter of the, uh, the, the, the remaining part of our password, we look at the first row. And uh, the, the index column of the first row, say, first row says that we are going to use the first letter of our mnemonic word, which is a B. And what we do is we do a lookup of, look of the column B in the first row and get the exclamation mark as our, uh, as our uh, password letter. We do the same for the second row. In this case, we're going to use the uh, letter with the index 4, which corresponds to T. We look up T in the second row. We get five. Uh, we do the same for the third row. Uh, this time we have the index minus three. Minus three corresponds to the letter R, which, um, if you look up the Rth column, we get uh, the the letter capital F. And if you do the, do it for the uh, the first uh, the fourth column, uh, we get the letter V. So as you see, we were able to construct the uh, construct a random password out of uh, this mnemonic word birth. Um, now let's let's look at the the table here. If the adversary gets this gets uh, hold of this table, uh, they can readily get the first four letters of your password. But the the remaining four letters they have to um, they have to find out from from this table. And in this table, I guess we have. Um, we have nine unique letters in each row, which means that uh, they have um, we, uh, they have to they have to they have a password space of nine to the four um, to uh, defeat this uh, the, 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 this uh, table. And let's see, the helper card actually uh, acts as a as a as a secret sharing uh, mechanism. So the, the secret that you're sharing is, is, the, is, the, is the random password. And you're sharing it uh, bet uh, between a random, uh, random secret that is inherent to the system that you, you, don't, you don't know about. And also there is a public, uh, the, the XOR of this uh, password and that's uh, random is, is public and it is stored in the, in the helper, helper card inherently. And what you do is actually you do um, um, the the the, ran, the random